Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I am Randy Vider. As was said, I'm a senior software engineer on the iOS SDKs team here at Twilio. And we're going to be talking about adding chat to your existing applications using Twilio's IP messaging product. So, a quick poll. How many of us on a daily basis use apps that either incorporate chat as a core feature or as a value add-on to its experience? So I expected. Chat is a very compelling use case. It helps build community within your applications. It helps empower communications between the users of your application. And it can be also a great way to add contextual support when and where a user needs it in your application. That's a use case that we're going to be exploring this afternoon. Gardner says that for customer service-centric integrations alone, Chat, live chat is a preferred channel for 2% of users today and is expected to grow to 10% of interactions by 2018. As Jeff mentioned this mor in this morning's keynote, customers want the option to communicate using their chosen channel, maintaining context of what they were doing, and using human language. For an increasing number of customers, that channel is going to be chat. Twilio's IP messaging product offers you the ability to quickly add chat to your existing applications, be they iOS, Android, or web. And it's also a great way to build new chat-centric applications from the ground up. We offer easy to integrate client SDKs that'll rapidly integrate with your applications. We support back-end integrations using REST and webhooks to customize that chat experience for your users. We have feature parity across SDK platforms. We're going to be focusing on iOS today, but everything we're doing today is applicable to Android and JavaScript as well. We're going to be exploring an application that was originally written in Objective-C, as I know many of you are still supporting Objective-C applications, but I did want to mention that our SDKs work great as Swift modules as well. Let's take a look at how the architecture for our app is going to fit together. We have an iOS application which is going to contact uh, WidgetCo server by means of an HTTP post. Uh, both the application source and the backend source is going to be available in GitHub soon after Signal. That server is going to reach out to IP messaging using REST, our REST API to create a channel. WidgetCo server will then use that same REST API to add both the user and the agent to our channel. The iOS app then uses a GET request to obtain a Twilio authentication token to use for IP messaging to communicate with our servers. The app then uses the channel identifier that was provided to enable the user and agent to begin chatting using over WebSockets. We're going to be starting with a sample application that implements a store. The user is going to reach a point in that interaction that they're not going to know if the product that they're looking at is the right product for their needs. So they're going to want to talk to someone about that. We're going to do a little bit of back-end setup, which we saw in the architecture slide. We're going to create that channel, add the agent and user to that channel, and send an initial hailing message from the agent saying, hello, how may I help you with? And they're going to give some context to what the user was looking at. The user and agent are going to chat back and forth. And then when that interaction ends, the user is going to be placed right back to where they were when they started the chat. We're going to also do some cleanup on the back end, and we're going to delete that channel. We're going to release the agent back into the pool so they can help other customers. We're going to be focusing on the user and agent chat portion in today's session. To add chat, we're going to first add IP messaging to our project. We're going to use CocoaPods for this. We'll then initialize the client using that authentication token that was obtained from our back end. We're going to send and receive messages with IP messaging. Then we're going to clean up the client, uh, return the user back to what they were doing. We'll be adding IP messaging chat inter to a chat interface built on top of Slack text view controller. It's a great open source uh, view controller that you can use to integrate IP messaging into your application. And it's open source. We have a short session this afternoon, so I please ask you to hold any questions for afterwards. I'll be out in the hallway after the session. 
I'm going to be using a code pasting tool called Demo Monkey. This is something that Apple's used in WWDC in the past. It allows me to paste in code and then talk you through it. Uh, it's going to act as a uh, in infinite paste buffer. I mentioned it only because the first time I saw it and a number of other people have seen it, you're kind of uh, focused on how I'm doing that rather than the actual code. So I wanted to mention that. Our sample application is going to be a widget store. Uh, and users are going to get stuck in there. So let's take a look at what the application looks like so far. I'm going to go ahead and run that application. going to log in as our user who happens to have the same name as I do. And we're going to see widgets here. So we're going to go ahead and open up the agent interface as well. I think it's a 20 millimeter widget that I need, but I'm not quite sure. So I do have questions. You can see that so far in our chat interface, we're wired up, but we're not actually sending any messages. We're not receiving any messages from the back end, but we are creating that support incident with the agent. Let's go ahead and back out of that. Go ahead and close that chat there. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in the IP messaging using CocoaPods. We're using a custom source right now. This source, uh, the version of IP messaging that we're using in today's talk isn't yet released. It's going to be released later this week. Uh, so you can ignore the source here and the version identifier there. Uh, Twilio is distributing its beta products through its own uh, CocoaPod source repository or uh, PodSpec repository on GitHub. We'll be publishing to the global PodSpec repository upon release. We're also making use of MB Progress HUD here. That's how we're displaying a message to the user that we're connecting them to the agent. And then here's the Slack text view controller that we're going to use for our user interface. Let's go ahead and do a pod install to bring in IP messaging. Next thing we're going to do is bring in the, so we're going to be working in the chat view controller, which is the file we have open now. And I'm going to go ahead and give ourselves some more room. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually bring in the imports for both Twilio Common and Twilio IP messaging client. Twilio Common gives you a class called Twilio Access Manager, which I'll describe in a few moments. We're going to also set ourselves up as the delegate for Twilio IP messaging client. We're going to set up some instance variables here, the first of which is going to be the target channel SID. Uh, I'll, I'll describe the purpose of that in just a couple moments as well. We're going to keep a reference, a strong reference to the chat client itself. We're responsible when we create this for keeping a reference to this for the entire life cycle of the chat application. We're going to have a reference to the channel that the agent and the user are going to be speaking on. And then we're going to have our own local copy of a messages array. And I'll get into why we do that in a couple moments as well. So the first thing we're going to do is use our custom support manager to talk to that back end that we saw in the architecture diagram. That's going to be the code that's going to be responsible for creating that channel using the REST API. The return of that is going to be JSON. It's going to have the channel identifier in it. We're going to set that locally. We're going to be using that in a couple moments after we start up our IP messaging client to load the correct channel and connect the user with the agent. Next thing we're going to do is initialize the IP messaging client. To do, that, to do that, we first need to obtain a access token from our backend. We're going to do this on a background thread just to keep the user's uh, main UI thread nice and responsive so it doesn't lock up their application. We're going to grab a token from our service. Then we're going to create an access manager. Access manager helps you maintain your access tokens. It'll alert you to the pending expiry of a token, and you can go ahead and request a new one from the server to ensure uninterrupted uh, communication with the Twilio backend. We're going to pass it into chat client. We're passing properties nil here because the default properties are sufficient for our use. Uh, these properties allow you to override the initialization behavior of how much data uh, Twilio IP messaging client is going to load up initially. We're also going to set ourselves as a delegate so we can receive messages from this class. The first of those messages that we're going to implement is when the IP messaging client is open and ready for business. Once we receive status completed here, 
We're going to be able to ask IP messaging for that channel that the agent is waiting for our user on. We're going to use the channel uh, identifier to be able to load that. Next thing we'll do is call synchronize. This gets the channel ready to be able to access messages as well as the members that are on that channel. The only response here that we're handling at the moment is a failure response. We're gonna have a different callback uh, that we'll get once this channel is ready for us to use. That callback will be implemented here. We'll receive synchronization status changed uh, with a status of all once that channel is available for us. We're gonna make sure it's the channel that we're looking for. And we're going to load those initial messages. So this ties into the array that we set up at the top of the source file. Uh, we're going to want to keep our own copy of a messages array here so we can control when messages are added into the user's user interface. Slack Text View Controller by default uses a UI table view, and UI table view really appreciates it if you let it know when data is about to change do the operations, and then when it has finished. This also allows you to influence the animations that will be used for adding those messages in. We're going to dismiss that heads up display that we were showing uh, that the agent was being found because we clearly have an agent now. We're going to take the text view and give it keyboard access, a keyboard focus. The next delegate call we're going to implement is message added. This will be called whenever a message is received on the channel, either by the agent or by the user themselves. So when the user sends a message to IP messaging, it's going to reach the back end and then get synchronized back down to the client via message added, just as an agent's message would. Here we'll handle the channel deletion callback. This will happen if the agent closes the chat before the user does. We don't want the user to be staring at a chat window that's never going to receive any more information from the agent. So we're going to dismiss them back to the product view and shut down the IP messaging client. Here we're going to build the actual message cell that we're going to display in that, in that UI table view. First thing we'll do is select which message this index path refers to. We're going to style that UI table view depending on whether this is a local message or whether this is a remote message. This is going to implement the user interface that's very popular where you see your local messages on one side of the screen and the remote parties, in this case our agent, on the other side of the screen. We're going to set the author and the body of that, message, of that UI table view cell here. We're also going to use that same author and body to determine how tall to make our UI table view cell. So we can dynamically expand that depending on how many lines of text the message contains. There's a helper method on our table view cell that helps us determine that and it takes into account the margins on either side as well as the size of our uh, text bubble that we draw. We're going to take care of Slack text view controller's uh, send button that appears next to the text view. This will also happen when the user presses the return key on their keyboard. First thing we're going to do is grab the text that was in that text view. We're going to create a new IP messaging message based on that text. We're going to go ahead and send it to the channel. Once again, we're only going to be handling a failure result here. Um, we'll get the message that the user actually sent through our message added delegate above. The last thing we're going to do for the moment is implement the button that will allow the user to end the chat and release the agent back into the pool. So we're going to call on our custom support manager and support request for client and then we'll call client shutdown. So let's go ahead and see how our application is looking. Bring up our agent interface as well. All right, we'll log back in. So I, have a, I bought a thingy last year and I lost my widget. So I'm not sure which of these widgets, the descriptions aren't terribly helpful. I'm not quite sure which one I really need to purchase. So once again, we're gonna land back on the 20 millimeter. I'm pretty sure this is the one I need, but we're gonna talk to an agent just to make sure. You can see that we're hooked up now. Taylor's initial uh, message, which actually was sent dynamically by our back end, says, hello, Randy, how may I help with your inquiry? 20 millimeter widget. So I'm gonna ask Tyler, hi, 
is this the replacement part, thank you, autocorrect, that I need for my thingy that I purchased last year? I could have chosen a shorter sentence there. Uh, so Tyler's going to get this request. And because we know who the user is and because we know, because we know what uh, product the user was actually looking at, we have some context information here in our agent interface that's going to help us be able to answer this inquiry. So their last order was a 2015 thingy, uh, 20 millimeter. So the 20 millimeter widget is going to fit it just fine. So we'll be able to let Randy know that. Yes, that is the correct part. May I help any further? Um, no, that answered my question. We'll go ahead and close that chat. So there's one other feature that I'd like to show you. I'd like to show you uh, typing indicator support. So Slack Text View Controller offers a UI to show when the, uh, when the remote party is typing. And IP Messaging implements this feature within our SDK as well. So we're going to add that in real quick here. The first set of callbacks we'll handle are from IP Messaging. Typing started on channel is going to be called when typing begins on the channel that the member is a, that the member, that the user is a member of. Um, there's a typing indicator view in Slack Text View Controller that we can add and remove strings to. We're going to send the identity, which is the name of the user in this case. We're going to also support typing ended on channel to do likewise. And the last thing we're going to do here is have the other part of that where now we're being notified when other users are typing on our channel. We're going to let IP messaging know when the local user, the user of the iPhone app, is typing. We'll call current channel typing. It's safe to call this for every keystroke that the user types because we'll batch up those requests and send them on an interval that's configurable and, and in your uh, interface uh, with and the console uh, to determine how often. The default for this is 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, we'll log in. Go back in. And we'll be able to see that now when I type over here, you see typing Randy over there. And then likewise, when Tyler types, Tyler's typing as well. All right. So I think it's great how much more contextual supporting our customer became as a result of not only offering the option to speak with someone when and where the customer had their question, but also carrying that context through, the, through to the agent and the ability to manage, to merge that context that was provided with previously existing information in their system. Just to recap how we did this, we added IP messaging to our project. We used CocoaPods in this case. We also support a tarball that you can download and drop the framework for IP messaging right into your project if you're not using CocoaPods. We initialized the client with the access token from our custom backend, the widget code's custom backend. We sent and received messages using Slack Text View Controller as our user interface. And then we release the local client as well as the agent back to the pool. Some additional possibilities. We, we covered a support, in, uh, support scenario here, but you could in, imagine adding in-game chat to your application, either to encourage or to taunt other players within that game. You can imagine it for on-demand services, anywhere, anything from ride sharing to delivery services to allow users of your platform to communicate anonymously um, very, very, very quickly and then be able to maintain privacy after that transaction is completed. Due to the flexible nature of IP messaging, you're not just limited to text messages. We're going to be supporting other types of media in the future, but even today, you could Instead of sending a text, a string of human readable text as the message, you could send JSON and augment that with 
any additional information you may wish to. You can imagine a chess game here where you send not only the moves through IP messaging, but also any communication between the users. And of course, enriched customer service options that provide bi-directional contextual communication during an exchange. Thank you very much. At the bottom of this slide, you'll find a link to the sample code. It'll be posted uh, soon after signal ends, once the next IP messaging release happens. Um, stick around in this room after the talk. Uh, Virgil Security is going to be demonstrating how to add end-to-end -end encryption on top of IP messaging. Thank you very much.